in Wisconsin. And tonight, uh-oh, are you next? Maybe, and that's not particularly good. The nation, well, actually, the entire world has been stunned by WikiLeaks, the website that just published 250,000 confidential State Department documents. Now, if this can happen to the United States government, is nothing safe anymore. Could you be next? Senator Lindsey Graham says the people at WikiLeaks could have blood on their hands. He joins us live here in Washington. Good evening, Senator. Good Welcome evening. back to Washington. And how bad is this? I think it's really bad. Just imagine you're a diplomat or a foreign leader. Would you be willing to openly talk to the United States knowing that your conversations could wind up in the newspapers throughout the world? Uh, what if you're helping the United States try to put together some kind of regime to contain Iran and your name is mentioned in one of these documents? It could be a death sentence. So the world is a dangerous place. I think we're at war and these documents are classified. I can't imagine this happening during World War II, but the people who've leaked these documents could have blood on their hands. Now, I've seen numbers that are staggering yeah. that up to three million people in our government could have had access to these papers. Obviously, one person well, did. Well, but I mean, like, what, I mean, there, how, I there's mean, a reason. The, the zipper net, now, I can't get into great detail, but we want our military people to know what's going on in the world. And up to a million people have access to these secret documents. And my question is, do you really need a million people to have access? And why couldn't we find out that 250,000 plus were downloaded? What kind of system do we have to track the way these documents are being taken care of? Apparently none. Apparently well, apparently not none. a very good one. So the Pentagon needs to get his act together. It's just not the PFC. He'll get a fair trial. But if he did what they say he did, then the sentence and the charges should be a deterrent to future people trying to go down this road. Whatever motivated this young man, he's put a lot of people at risk if he did what they say. And somebody in the Pentagon needs to look at the system to make sure that next time, when you have this many documents downloaded, people will know about it. Uh, now, the terrifying part, the most terrifying, yeah. is if we've compromised some sources, confidential yes. sources that have provided some information, right. and if we put them at risk or put the United States at risk. Absolutely. We have, we only hear that's a possibility. That's done. We haven't seen this that. This is the second dump. Okay. The but first dump did have people who had cooperated with us in Afghanistan and Iraq, and some of the names were uh, deleted by news organizations, but what about the documents getting in the hands of people who will not delete them? This second round of documents talks about diplomacy on very sensitive topics like containing the Iranian nuclear program. Uh, the but is it, is it fact specific? Because what I read, and I'm just uh, reading you know, the excerpts that are in the New York Times and other news organizations, I don't have access yeah. to them. But what I'm reading is it, it really looks like, oh, like I hate seeing how the sausage is made. I see, you know, like within the State Department, and I see in the allegations that the State Department's telling diplomats to spy on people. That looks lousy. And the, al and the, and the, and the disclosure that we think Iran is dangerous nuclear weapons. Did we really know that one already? So I, I, I didn't see anything that was profoundly disturbing. Well, here's disturbing. what is profoundly disturbing to me, to take statements by world leaders, potential allies, about a sensitive topic like Iran and have it all over the world. That is going to deter people from talking with us uh, with a candid fashion in the future. And if you can't talk and negotiate, then this country is less safe. So dumping these documents where you have world leaders being quoted is a very bad thing for our national security and our future viability as a as a leader of the world. Well, who is this information being? Like, let's take discussions about a world leader. Let's take uh, Berlusconi and Putin, for instance. Right. I mean, that stuff. That, I mean, that that makes us, I think, look lame. Well, it does. I don't know how whether it jeopardizes it, but who's this information well, supposed it, uh, to go well, to? And who's it, supposed to protect it? Well, you have diplomats reporting back conversations and talking about profiles. That is a bit tacky. It's one thing to <clears throat> suggest a world leader is not squared away. We can overcome that. It's another, which is which is a bad thing, because who's writing these cables? Do they think no one's ever going to read them? You know, some of this is just tacky by our diplomatic corps. It, it looks but, junior high. Well, it is junior high, but here's what's really dangerous. When you start quoting leaders of Gulf Arab states who may need to align with us in the future to contain Iran, that has a devastating impact on national security. That really is a big deal. All right, one other question before I let go okay. is these terror trials. Um, I know that <laughs> You shake your head. Well, we're at war. The people who attacked us on 9-11 are not part of a mafia. They're part of al-Qaeda. Members of al-Qaeda should be considered enemy combatants, not common criminals. We should be at war with them. They're at war with us. In every other war,
war, you take people who commit war crimes and try them in the military. Putting Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the mastermind of 9-11 in civilian court, could cost a half a billion dollars, put American citizens at risk, is criminalizing the war, it's a terrible idea. We should be taking these people into military commission trials, be tried by our military in a transparent fashion. What are we doing? We're doing nothing. This administration is frozen. They're trying to pawn these people off. They're bribing countries to take terrorist detainees. We should hold terrorist detainees and be glad we've got them. We shouldn't be bribing people to take them off our hands. The fact that we have them in jail means they can't kill Americans, and all of them should have their day in court, but should be in military court. Now, the Christmas Day bomber, I don't mind taking that person into a civilian court, fresh off the battlefield an American citizen, but the guys who orchestrate these attacks in our country we've had in military prison for six or seven years, they should never be in a civilian court. We never took the German and Japanese prisoners and put them in federal court. We talk about bribing other countries. I don't know how <laughs> other countries can be receptive if they, when they read the WikiLeaks about them. I don't know how they can be now receptive. how are you going to get another country to take one of these detainees? I, I don't know. I mean, look, I, I mean, look, our intelligence has not been overwhelmingly, uh, you know, impressive. Look at the weapons of uh, mass destruction in, in uh, Afghanistan, I mean, in Iraq. Look at the fact that look we're dealing with a Taliban imposter. Now right. we've got WikiLeaks look of all these documents. System that you, you know, these people didn't rob a liquor store. You shouldn't read rights to a guy who just tried to blow up a plane or give him lore. You should find out how did you learn to blow up the plane? Is someone else trying to blow up another it's plane? It's a mess. We're at war, and I'm going to create a legal regime we can be proud of to fight a war, not a crime. And I hope Eric Colder, who's a good man, will start showing some leadership here and get our laws in line with being at war. Senator, thank you, sir. Thank you. Next.